Okay, hello everyone and welcome to this session on uh, an introduction, a practical introduction to ACCA streams. Uh, my name is Jacek Konicki, I work at Software Mill, which is a software house, a 100% remote and flat software house. If it sounds fun to you, you can just ask me questions later or you can just send a CV, we are always hiring. Uh, this session uh, will be something between a live coding session and a workshop because well, you will be you will be coding. You, if th those of you who have prepared the environment, uh, as it was mentioned in the communication from the organizers, could could be able to like fully follow. Those of you who don't have your laptops or don't have the environment prepared would be able to follow as well. So I hope everyone is satisfied after this talk. Uh, for those of you who have your laptops but haven't uh, like completed the prerequisites, you can still uh, go to this repository on GitHub and uh, and clone it locally. So, well, you don't, you, you, if, you, if you don't have Docker and Cassandra running, you won't be able to run uh, the entire application, but you will still be able to like code along. Uh, and for, for all those who will be coding with me, uh, this coding is divided into some small steps. Uh, you will be able. Th th there, are, there are tags in the repository for every small step. So after uh, after after each after completing each step, I will tell you in case if something is not working at your machine to just check the the next tag so that you have everything in a working state. So hopefully uh, we can all do it. Okay, so stream processing. Stream processing is actually a hot topic these days. This is a slide for from yesterday's talk of my colleague from Software Mill. So if you, if you attended the small intro to big data, you may have already seen it. And basically, there are, as, as you can see, there are a number of, uh, of stream processing technologies. Uh, all those listed here are actually a bit different than ACCA streams because they are they, they are they are distributed, which means that you are processing a data like as a stream of data in a distributed manner. So you have multiple nodes, and and, and the data is processed uh, processed on those nodes. And actually, what what stream processing is all about? You have a producer, which is a source of data, basically. And you have a consumer at the very end. So the producer is at the beginning, the consumer is at the end, and the data flows. The data flows through a number of, of processing stages. So you have a source of data, you want to process it somehow, and ultimately you want it to be consumed by, by like the, the, end, the, the last stage. So the data flows in a one direction from left to right here, but also in a, in a stream processing architecture, it's good to have something called back pressure which, which is a way of, uh, of like the subsequent steps signaling their demand for data to the previous steps. Because you may imagine that if you, if you have producers and consumers, they may have different velocities. You may have a fast consumer and, uh, and a fast producer and a slow consumer, or the other way around. The producer can be slow and the consumer can be fast. And in order, like, in, in order for the stream not to get stuck, it's good to have a way to communicate uh, demand for, for, uh, for elements in the stream. And that's what we call back pressure. And back pressure is basically a way for the processing stages to, to signal to the previous stages that they need data to process. In ACCA stream, uh, this is uh, realized as something called dynamic push-pull. So basically, the, the, the steps downstream signal the demand to the steps before. So this is like a general terminology for, uh, for stream processing. In ACCA streams, the ACCA streams has its own names for, for those steps. So a producer in ACCA streams is called a source, the consumer is called a sync, and all the intermediate steps are called flows. And all of those, so a source, flows, and sync, uh, compose a graph. And a graph is what we will be working with when, uh, when using the ACCA streams API. So as I said, ACCA streams, like contrary to the, to the technologies that I showed you on the previous slide, it's not distributed, so it's well. It, it can be, and I will talk it uh, about uh, about it in a minute. But basic, like the basic implementation is is not distributed, so it's like for uh, you, you can run your tasks in parallel, but you run them on a single machine. The important thing about ACCA streams is that the API that is exposed, uh, that the API exposes a DSL for for creating your own building blocks. So you create a building blocks for for your stream processing, which can be reused afterwards. And the very important thing is that the, the composition of the graph itself, so I, so I mean creating the building blocks, is lazy. So there is, there is no actual processing happening until you run the graph. 
So all the blocks, the, the, the blocks are just, we may call them recipes for processing data, but they are not, not, but nothing is happening with them until you actually run them. So until you actually run the graph. And I said that Akka streams can be, uh, can, can be run in a distributed manner because in Akka streams, you, we, we create those recipes and then we need a way to run, the, run those recipes. And to run those recipes, we need something called a materiali materializer. And Akka provides a materialized based on actors, but there is also in an incubating materializer based on Apache gear pump, which has just been released. It's, I, I think it's an alpha version or something. But this is a, like a way to go for a, for a, for a distributed processing of a, of, an, of, of a stream defined in terms of Akka streams. And actually in Akka streams, uh, it's, it's easy, like you, you have a DSL for attaching uh, Akka actors to like the, to the, as, as a source or as a sync, and Akka actors themselves can be distributed as well. So there are ways to, to run Akka streams in a distributed manner, but like the basic, basic implementation and the basic materializer based on actor but, but is, is not distributed itself. Okay, so let's let's see what uh, what's is what's the use case for today. So what what we will be coding actually. So we will have a number of uh, of CSV or actually a semicolon separated values in files which will be dzipped. Uh, all each file would contain like a, a pair a pairs of lines. Each each of each each line has an ID and a value, and there are always two lines uh, to, with the same ID and possibly a and a value which may be valid or invalid. And what we want to do would be to import those files, uh, process them. Our processing would be computing an average of, of b b by ID. So for every two lines with the same ID, we would like to compute an average. Uh, we would also handle the case if one of the lines or both contain an invalid value. And then we will be storing the, the data into Cassandra. So this is like a big data scenario. We have Cassandra, we have a lot of files. Of course, not too many, but, but we can still call it big data. Okay, so let's let's go to the coding part. Uh, for those of you who have uh, like made the the prerequisite step, uh, uh, some people have told me that uh, it's not possible to build uh, build this uh, this application, and the reason may be that you have an out of date uh, Phantom driver because it may not be in the in the Maven Central. So for those of you who have problems with with building the application, please go to your build.sbt uh, and just uh, just change the version of the Phantom DSL from 1.22.0, which which is in the repository to the newer one, which is 1.29.3, and hopefully it should work. Uh, no, it, do, it still doesn't. Okay, so... Okay. So does, is there anyone who has, to like, who, who has, has it checked out, but it's not working, it's not building, or... Okay. Yeah, okay, well, so if, if you know to so how to solve it, that's fine. Okay, so uh, we have a skeleton for the application. Here we have a number of, uh, of uh, configuration parameters which basically set to tell us where, where to take the, the files from, how many, like, how, how, what level of parallelism do we want to have? So we have different levels for, uh, for para parallelism f uh, in case of files. So how many files do we want to process at once? How many writes do we want to make at once to Cassandra? And how many uh, parallel operations that, not, uh, that don't require I.O. do we want to make at once? So this is, the, this is a bit of configuration. And since uh, we will be dealing with uh, with like the actor materializer, we'll be dealing with futures. We ha we need an actor system uh, here, and we'll just uh, take it as an implicit parameter. And we will be using it afterwards. So this will be an actor system. And since we'll be dealing with futures and things like that, we need an execution context, which, which is required to, to manipulate futures. And uh, we'll take the, the execution context, which is basically a thread pool from the actor system. So we have a system dispatcher here. 
Uh, this might not always be a good idea because if you if if, if you do something wrong to the, to the to the execution context, for example, you you use all the threads that are there, then uh, the actor system may not be able to work correctly. So normally, when you when you deal with futures, especially with I/O operations, it's always good to think about uh, what execution what execution context do you want to use, and perhaps use a separate use a one that is separate from the the actor system in order not to block the actor system, but for the sake of the demo, it's enough to, to use the, the system dispatcher. Okay, so the first step, uh, we, we, now, now we'll be basically writing the building blocks of our application. So if we, if we have file that contains lines, the first step is, uh, is to define a recipe, what do we want to do with a single line? So we'll start with writing a, a method, which for at the moment doesn't have to do anything with ACCA streams, we'll go to the DSL in a minute. So our method will be called parse line, and it will take two set of parameters. First will be a, a file path and a string, and the second set of parameters will be a line and also a string. Uh, I will explain in a second, it become clear why, why this is a partially applied function with, with two set of parameters, but it, it's, it's not a coincidence, we, it, we will make use of it later. Uh, and with, it will return a future, so it will be asynchronous. And the type of the future would be a reading. And reading basically is our very simple domain model class. So it's a trait that has an ID method. Uh, and it has uh, two, two, two cl case classes that extend it. One for a valid reading, which has an ID and a value. Uh, and one for an invalid reading that just has an ID. But we will, we will need an information that there was an invalid reading for, uh, for the step where we will compute the average. So we need to distinguish between valid and invalid readings here. Okay, so we want uh, the computation to be asynchronous, so we return a future here. And inside the future, well, we take the line, we split it by the semicolon, and those would be our fields. Now from the fields, we take the first one, uh, convert it to integer. This is going to be our ID. We take the second field, uh, we convert it to double, and this is going to be our value. And now, well, in the simplest scenario, we could just return a valid reading with the ID and the value. But as, we, as we've seen in the introductory slide about the data, the, some of the lines can, can contain invalid values, which means such values that cannot be parsed to a double, so we need to handle it somehow. So let's use a try clause here. And if everything goes fine with the, with the like parsing to double, we just return the valid reading with the value. Uh, but in case something goes wrong, we'll basically catch everything. Uh, we can log it. So like the I, I have the logging statement generated because but it's it's not really relevant. What 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 message do you include here? I didn't want to write it uh, write it from scratch here. So there is a little helper. And here we return an invalid reading, which just contains an ID. And it will, we will use it later to, to distinguish between the valid and invalid readings. Okay, actually I didn't show you the, the repository and the tags. So basically, there, there are eight tags. We started with the first one. And now the, the method we wrote is the, is the single line parser. So if, you, if, if, you, if, if, if it doesn't compile, for example, for you, or anything doesn't work, uh, you can just do git checkout minus f and and give and give it the, the tag you want to check out. So at this point, it would be the single line parser. And by the way, let's see whether it actually compiles. Just to be sure. Okay, so far so good. So now we have a, a recipe for for processing a single line. Uh, so let's let, now. Now, we'll, since we will be streaming the files, so we won't be reading the files line by line, but instead the files will be streamed like it would be a stream of bytes. We need to to tell act, to, to tell our application how to how how to split the byte stream into lines. So for this, we're going to need a fir the first step of our flow, which will be called a line delimiter. And now we'll start, we'll start to use the actual like API of ACCA streams. So the type of our delimiter uh, would be a flow. 
And you can see that it has three, three type parameters. First, the type first is the type of the input of the input of the flow, so the the type of the value that will come in. The second is the value that be, be, will come out, and the the third one is is the type of the so-called material materialized value. And uh, materialized value is something that can be can can be emitted from the from the flow to the outside world because the the first the first two types uh, so the input and output are are the types of, of of values that like flow between the streams but the the streams like live live in their own world and if you want to send something outside this is called the materialized value in our case we won't be using the materialized values because all the like the, 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 the our data would end up in cassandra so the, it won't be emitting anything to the out, uh, like outside of the flow uh, so, but, but but you can you, if you have a flow that that sh should actually return something, you can you can use this materialized value for that. So the types of uh, for those flow, the input would be a byte string, which is uh, basically an ACCA wrapper for a for, for a string. The output would also be a byte string, and the materialized value would use a special type from ACCA which is not used, and it basically says that we won't be won't be extracting taking any any value outside. And uh, actually, we have a built-in uh, step for uh, for doing such operations. Uh, it's called framing with the delimiter method. And here we basically specify a delimiter as a byte string. Uh, so in our case, the, the delimiter would be a new line. Uh, we need to specify the maximum length of the of, of a single frame. So in our case, well, our lines are short lots. So let's say 128 here. And we have a final parameter here called allow truncation, and this parameter tells uh, tells like that the the ACCA streams what to do with a line that doesn't contain the delimiter. Uh, and if we if, if we say allow tr if, if we set it to true, it would it, it will, well if it if it encounters a line that doesn't have a delimiter, which may be the last line in a file, it will like emit it downstream. So it will treat at it as an and as another chunk of data, and it will just just like fin finish processing the stream. If we set it to false, our stream would fail on lines that then don't have a delimiter at the end. So if we forgot to put a new line at the end of our file, it would fail. So we want to like uh, be, be, be safe here. So we just say that we allow truncation and a line without a new line at the end would be, would be fine, basically. So this is our first step. Uh, the second step uh, would be parsing the entire file. So we want we take a file with lines, and we want to to have a collection of readings. Readings inter, uh, I mean our our domain model, which we have here. So the the next step and the next step would be called parse file, and we will be like using this this flow syntax a lot. This time, uh, the in input of this step would be a file. Uh, the output would be a reading. Of course, it will, it, it's a stream, so it would be constantly emitting readings, but we are passing the, the type of the single value that gets emitted. And we, don't we won't have any materialized value, since the reading will be emitted like in the, in the world of the stream. Nothing would, would come outside, so the, the materialized is still not used. OK, it's not the, not the file I wanted, actually. Mm. Where is it? Okay, it's a Java IO file that we want here. Okay, and now to define a non f in in the in the previous step we had a, a, f a framing uh, f f a framing step. Here we just just want to to do, to tell what what to do with the with every file. So we we start to define a a flow of file, and then we have like var various methods that we can execute on the flow, uh, which basically are about uh, the the processing of the flow of of of, of these files. And the first one uh, that we want to use is flat map concat. Flat map concat is basically well, it, it 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 lets you make a map operation on the file, so so so, but basically convert convert the file into something else, and we we would we would convert our file into sequence of readings, so in, into a collection of readings. But we don't want to emit sequences of readings. We want to emit like a reading by reading, so one by one. So when fr when from our file we have a sequence of readings, 
we eventually want to flatten the sequence so that uh, our flow, our step doesn't emit as like sequences of readings, but it emits single readings. And that's, that's why we're using flat map con concat because it would basically do a map operation, then flatten the, fl flatten the resulting collection and the flow, the, the, the step will emit the elements one by one. So here we have a file and now we, we, we want to stream the file. So uh, to stream the file will be, since our files are gzipped, uh, we'll be using a gzip input stream. We also need to, uh, to pass a file input stream here from our file. Let's uh, have a variable here, an input stream. Uh, and now we have a helper method uh, in Akka streams, which is called stream converters. It's a helper object. And it has a from input stream method, which basically lets us take, uh, take a stream, uh, like a, an, an input stream, and use it as a source for our, for, for our further processing. And here it's important that we don't, don't, don't just provide the file, we need to provide a function that returns the file. So basically we'll have a, uh, mm, sorry, input stream. So we have a simple function that just returns our input stream. And now the next step, if we, we, we have like the source of, of bytes from the file, uh, we want to like pass it via uh, our line delimiter because we'll be extracting lines. So here is the first place where we, where we actually use the, the graph DSL for constructing our graphs. So we're using the line delimiter building block that we created before, and we are, we are adding it here as a, the next processing step. Now we also want to uh, drop, per perhaps we want to drop a number of lines. This is a configuration parameter we have at the top. And it may, may, may be useful because we may, we may have a header line in the files, for example, and we, we, may, we may want to skip it. So this is the, an, an easy way to, to achieve it. Uh, now we want, since, uh, since our, uh, our, our data, are we, we have byte strings, and ultimately we want strings here. So uh, basically we want to, uh, to convert our byte strings to an UTF-8 string. And now, the, and now we have a line as a string, which is a line in the file. So the last step of this flow would be to parse this line using the method we defined before. So now we'll be using uh, a map async method, which basically uh, that does a mapping operation, so a conversion, but it, it doesn't uh, does it asynchronously. We can define, uh, as, as you can see, the, f the first parameter is the, the parallelism, so the number of, of uh, well, let's say threads that that would would, would process it that that would be executed, and the parallelism. And in this case, since since this is a, an operation that doesn't require any I/O uh, because it's it's just parsing the line in memory, we would use the the non-I/O parallelism. And now we're calling the uh, the parse line method. Uh, with the path of the file that we had here. And here is the reason why the, why the parse line method is uh, like a partially applied function because we applied partially to the file path. And then like the, 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 the second parameter, so the, the, the actual line to be parsed is provided by the map method when it, when it gets executed. Okay, so that's, the, that's, the, 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 that's what we have here, the, the step of like parsing the file into readings. And once again, please notice that here, so like when we process the input stream, uh, we, we emit a sequence of readings because the parse line method emits a reading, uh, but we are like we are, we are streaming readings, streaming sequences of readings. We want to flatten them, so that we are using uh, well, why we are using flat map concat here, so that like the sequences of readings are flattened into into single readings, which are then emitted downstream. And the the tag for this one is the uh, it's the file parser. So if you, if, if you get lost or something, you now may, may wish to check out the, uh, the number four tag, which is where what we are at at the moment. Okay, something is wrong with the file, so let's, let's just fix the import here because it's... Uh, I think th this would be the simplest solution. Um, Sorry for this one, it's always... A OK. 
Okay, so this is does this import, which is wrong here. And let's let's import the correct one with Java IO file. Okay, so now now it compiles on my machine as well. Okay, so this so, so now we have our our lines, our like our our file streamed. We parse the lines, we extract the readings. So now we get to the processing part, and in the processing part, we wanted to compute the average of of uh, of two readings, provided that any any of them is correct. So our next step will be called compute average, mm. and it, it would be a flow as well. And the flow would take a reading, either valid or invalid, because that's what we will be dealing with in this step. Uh, it will emit uh, a valid reading since our like our, our idea is that from from two readings which uh, of of which either can be valid or invalid we would make a single valid reading with with an average if any of the readings is valid we would be able to compute the average if both are invalid we would just use minus 1 for a, for for a fake average because we well we we need some value so we would be emitting a valid reading so uh, so one that has both an id and a value that can be further stored into the database and we, we once again we won't have any materialized value coming out of the flow to the outside world, so we're using not used for for the materialized type. And what we are doing here is we we're creating a flow which takes a reading because that's, that's basically the type parameter that we provided as uh, as the first one. And now we want to group the readings in a, in groups of two. So because we'll be processing like the every, uh, two, every two subsequent lines have the same ID and we want to, to compute the average from this. And now we'll use a method similar to the one we used before because in the previous step we used map async and here we're using map async unordered. And the difference between those two methods is that uh, map async does the, that does the mapping like in parallel but it keeps it it it, uh, it it keeps the order of the of the incoming elements. So even if an element that was farther uh, in the in the upstream gets finished earlier than the element that was like before, the elements are still like the results of the mapping are still emitted uh, uh, downstream in order. So the order is is preserved basically. Map async unordered is is it can 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 be faster because it doesn't it, it it like it emits the elements downstream as soon as the processing of the of each element has finished, so it may not it may not preserve the order, but because of this because of this it can be it can be faster. So it, it it's good to know whether you you actually need the order in the downstream or not, and if, and if not you can you can use the the unordered version which which may be simply faster. Uh, here we are once again providing the, the parallelism parameter and once again it's going to be the uh, non-IO parallelism because it's still not an IO, a non-IO operation, it's just computing the average in memory. Uh, and uh, what we get here is a sequence of readings because we were we were grouping the readings into in, in groups of two. So what w what we'll get inside our stream inside our flow actually would be a, a sequence of readings. And actually, it'd be the, it will be two readings, but the type is a sequence here. And since the map async or map async and order methods they, they they run asynchronously, we we need to return futures inside. Here we here you may remember that the parse line method returned a future because it was well it's th th this was how we implemented it. Uh, here we also want to to do the computation asynchronously, so we use the future block. And first of all, what what we want to do we we want to to, col to collect all the valid readings from from our readings collection. So the readings that we have here may contain an invalid one. We want on we only want to filter the valid ones because that's what f what we can compute the average from. So we'll say readings collect, uh, and if the if the readings we encounter is a valid reading, uh, we'll just return it, and we would store it in a valid readings variable. And now we're going to compute the the average. So there are two cases here. Uh, first, if we have uh, any valid readings, so the valid readings are not empty. We basically want to like compute the, the average, and you compute the average by uh, computing the sum. 
So we need to map each reading to a value. We need to th th then we need to sum those values, and we want to divide it by the size of the valid readings. So this is the average. It will work in in both uh, the case when there are two valid readings and where when there's a one valid reading because well, if, uh, the computing an average of a single reading may be an overhead, but this would make the code like more readable. Otherwise, we just want to return minus one, which is a fake value for our average. So that's that, that's all in this step. And the, the actually, it's not all because uh, the, the ultimate step is to uh, return a valid reading with the value we computed. And since we always have uh, always have two readings, either valid or invalid, and even an invalid reading has an ID, uh, we can just take the first element from the readings and use the ID of it because, well, the even an invalid reading has an ID, so we're fine here, and we'll use the average here. So in this step, we took like a, we, we took pairs of readings and squeezed them into a single reading, which, which holds an average of, uh, of, of the values, uh, either a real one or a fake one, depending on uh, whether the, the reading were readings were valid or not. So this is the, this is the fifth step. So you may, you may, if, if anything goes wrong uh, on your machine, you may, you may just check out the tag number five. Now the next step, since we have the, the, the reading, the, the average readings computed, uh, would be to store them in the database. So we're defining the ne next step for our, for our, uh, our stream processing. And it will be called store readings. This is, of course, going to be a flow. And the flow will take a valid reading, since this is what we have produced in the previous step. It will emit something that we actually don't care about, but we, we, we need to provide the value here. And this is a result set. And uh, if you're coding along, please uh, note that this is not a result set from java.sql. It's a result set from the Datastax drivers, so from the Cassandra driver we have, we have in our dependencies. Because that is basically what, we, what is returned by, by our simple uh, repository implementation. And once again, we are like skipping the, the materialized value. We don't need it, so we will say not use here. And once again, we're using the uh, well-known API. So we have a flow which takes a valid reading. And now we also, like, s since we're, we're not updating the values, we are only inserting them in, into Cassandra. Actually, Cassandra would, would update them, but that's not, that's not important here. Uh, we can we, we can make it well, like we, we can skip the order here, so we can use map async unordered once again. Uh, this time we choose a different parallelism because this is an I/O operation. We are accessing the database, so we may we may want to define a different parallelism level for our database operations. Uh, in our case, it's called concurrent writes, which basically says how many writes in parallel do we want to make to our database. Uh, and we have a reading here. And what we want to do with the reading, we have a magical uh, object called a reading repository. Mm, and we say save reading. And the reading repository, well, it's, it's already implemented, so you, you, you don't, uh, don't need to like, care about it. It's basically some simple, simple mapping of our object to the, to, to the Cassandra driver, driver API so that it knows how to store it, and it is then storing it into the database. You can have a look at it afterward, but here we uh, we just care about the fact that it has a safe method that that saves it and returns returns the future of a result set. So it's it's asynchronous by contract. It already returns the future, so it's a perfect fit for our code. And actually, we we, we also may want to do some error handling here. Uh, so we we can use the and then combinator on the future, and and then is 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 basically a kind of an in interceptor because it, uh, it, it is executed when the future completes. It does some logic that you define inside and then returns the original future. So here, when w whatever we write inside the and then combinator, uh, still the, the original future will be returned. So we like don't, don't change the object that is returned. We just can like intercept the moment when the future gets completed and do something there. And I will use like some code 
prepared previously. And st once again, it's not really not, not, not important what, uh, what kind of logging you have here. You may have none at all because it's not necessary. Uh, I, I'll just add it here for like the brevity and for, for the sake of having some, some information in the logs. So ba basically, if our future succeeds with whatever result, we are logging an information that the reading was safe. If it fails with some kind of exception, we just, we just uh, also log an error. So that's it. And this is the sixth step, storing readings. Mm, okay, looks like it compiles. So we have we, we have another building blocks. The building blocks so far stream the file, split the lines, so like parse the lines, generate readings, compute the average, and store them into the database. So what we are actually missing is like to, to, to connect our, we, we have a directory with files that, we gen that were generated previously. And we, we, we basically want to like add it somehow as a, as a source for our stream. So we'll define a method. F first of all, because uh, f f first, of f first method will be, will be telling how to import a single file. And, and then, then we have a method to import an entire directory which would just make use of it. So the import single file method will take, well, a file. And then uh, we'll be constructing a graph once again. So the graph in terms of ACCA streams. So uh, we, we, we need a source as the starting point of our graph. Uh, we have a helper method to create a source with a single element because here it will be a, a source with a single file uh, at, at the start. So we just say source single of file. And then we want to like pipe the elements through the, through the various steps that we defined before. Uh, so we will be using the via method. The first step is parsing the file. Uh, the second one is computing the average. And the third one is, the st is storing readings. So you, you can see here that as, uh, as, as, as long as you have the building blocks defined, the composition, so like building the graph, is, is, is pretty simple. And it's, it's a nice feature here that all the, all the VIA calls are type safe, so like the compiler knows what, what types of elements are accepted by the flow, what types of elements are emitted, and uh, we are, we, 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 like it guards us uh, not, to, not to make any type error. So it, it won't allow to, to like make a VIA call to a stage that, that uh, accepts a different type. So we are, we are type safe here. Uh, we'll do some logging here, just for like to, to, to have some information at the logs so that our, our logs are not empty. And then we are ready to run our graph. So we have, we have different methods to run the graph. Uh, we have a method called run with, which allows us to provide any type of sync. That, so sync, as you may remember from the introduction, is, is the, the last element of the, of the graph. So we, 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 can, we, we have some built-in syncs. We, you, you, can, you can create your own sync and just provide it here. We have also some, some built-in methods that, uh, that, that are like predefined syncs, which can do a fault, for example. They can do a for each, so, so process every element in some way. They can do reduce, so like s s some kind of aggregations. All the all all, all the built-in uh, built-in things return futures, so they are they are they are still still asynchronous. In our case, well, si since our our last step storing to the database actually does something with what we and does does what we want to do with the elements, we stores it in the data, store them in the database. We want we don't care what uh, what comes out of uh, of our flow, uh, so we'll just uh, use a thing called ignore. And sync ignore is a thing that well it, it, it still waits until un, until the, the the stream gets completed so until the, all the elements are processed, but it, it 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 just ignores the output so it doesn't do anything with it. But it's it's important to note that it, it just it like does doesn't ignore the stream completely so it doesn't it, it's it's not a call that just passes through and you and uh, and the stream uh, runs in the background it waits for the stream to complete but it just ignores the the outcoming elements. Uh, and once again, after, after running uh, the stream, uh, we may wish to, to do some logging. Once again, si since run with returns a future, we can, we can once again use the and then combinator of the f on the future. 
And we, we also have some very similar, similar logging to what we used before, basically logging a success and a failure. So this is our recipe for importing a single file. And now the, the last step we need is to say how to import an entire directory. So the method is called import from files. And what it does, it takes the import directory, which we defined in our configuration. Uh, it lists the files. So we need to convert them to list, because list files returns an array. We'll store it in a files variable. Now we want also to have some more input in our uh, logs. So, so we log the import of the directory that we were just starting. Uh, for some like uh, monitoring purposes, we want to, st to store the start time. Mm, sorry. Once again, start time. Okay, and what we want to do here, now we have a collection of files. So once again, we, we, we want to, create, to turn them into a source. And luckily, the source object has an apply method which takes an iterable. So our list of files is just fine as a source for, for a stream. Uh, so we basically say source files. Then we say map async unordered. Since, we, well, we, we don't care about the order of, of files. We, 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 we took care of the order in lines in files. But like if we, we, we can, we, we, we just, we, we don't need to like care of the order in which the, the files overall are processed. So we only care about the file line, lines in file. Uh, and now we, we just say uh, what kind of parallelism. And here it's also an IO operation, but a different one than writing to a database. So we have another setting for this one. It's called concurrent files. Uh, and the method we want to execute is, as you may guess, import single file. Because this, uh, we, we have a source of files which will emit uh, as a file by file, and then we have a map async unordered method which just needs to take a file. And that's what actually our import single file method does. Uh, we are running it once again with a sync uh, ignore because, well, we don't need the C. We don't care about the elements. We will also do some logging at the end. Uh, for example, we will compute the time that, we, that it took to import the files. Uh, sorry, after directory import. So we're basically computing the time, logging it, and, well, no magic here. And this may seem to be everything. But first of all, let's see if it compiles. And it doesn't compile because, as I said at the beginning, like you, wh when we are using the, the, the streams DSL, the graph DSL, this is just a recipe for creating the graph. So we, 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 we tell Akka streams how do we want to process our files, our, well, our data. But uh, in order for, uh, for Akka streams to be able to run it, uh, we need to, to be able to materialize the graph somehow. And as I said, we have a built-in materializer that is based on actors. Uh, in the future, we may be able to use another materializer, the gear pump one, for example. But here, basically, uh, we'll, we'll use the built-in one. Uh, so we need to provide uh, an implicit value with the materializer. And it will be just an actor materializer, and it takes an implicit actor system, which we which we defined before, and that's that, that's also the reason why we uh, why we had the actor system here, because the actor system, well, we use it first first for the dispatcher, so for the execution context of our futures, but the second place when we are using it, where we are using it, is is in the actor materializer, which uh, which takes an uh, implicit execution implicit actor system, so it it needs one, and now it should compile. But there is one more thing we need to take care of. Because in, in, in our implementation of, uh, of the streams, uh, we are relying on the, like, okay, if, if, if you, you may think of the situation when something goes wrong within a stream. So we have a stream of elements, the elements are processed, and an exception is thrown because, because of anything. And the question is, what happens next? 
and it turns out that the like uh, luckily we can we can define the behavior so it's configurable in ACCA streams but the default behavior is to stop the stream so if anything goes wrong if an exception is thrown like even for example at the second element the stream is cancelled and 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 the and the further processing is stopped so so nothing nothing happens and actually what we, we don't want the behavior because in our case even if something goes wrong with a with a single line or a single file we don't want to stop the entire processing but instead we'd, we'd rather go on with the processing and well if, if something went wrong with the line that we then we'll have the information in the logs and we, we may try to fix it in the future but we certainly we don't want to stop the stream and and and, and do nothing so in order to do it we, we we need to add some 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 more configuration to our stream so let's define a, a helper object a csv importer uh, and what what we need to define is something called uh, a decider and a decider is a is a like a, a, a kind a kind of a behavior that tells the tells tells the materializer what to do so what decision to make when something goes wrong in the within the stream so when if when an exception is thrown so our decider would want to do two things it it first of all we first of all would like it to log the log some information that something was wrong and to resume the operation so that the processing goes further so since it will be resuming and logging we would call it a resuming logging decider Uh, and we will need one parameter here, which will be the logger. So we'd be using uh, like uh, we would take a take a logger from outside to be able to like use use the proper one for for, for logging. Uh, and the logger, and it's the type is important here. If you are coding along, you need to, you need to take the the com type safe Scala logging, not any other logger because that's that's the loggers that we have predefined here. So the the type is is important. And the type of the return value is a supervision decider. Supervision is something from 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 like the ACCA streams API, and a decider is basically a method. Uh, is is something that, that that tells what to what to do with an error. And what we have here is uh, is basically a partial function that takes that 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 that, that takes an an exception. Well, it's, it's not a partial function even, I think. It's just a function that takes an exception. Takes an exception, and uh, we want to, to log it here. Let's see. So the first thing we are, we are doing is logging. And we need to, to, to instruct the, the, the materializer what to do next. Uh, so we're saying supervision, and we have various, various like decisions that we can make here. Our decision is resume. We, we can also restart. Uh, we could also, I don't, don't remember what is it called, but the default one is to like cancel everything. So, but we're using supervision resume just to like go on with, with processing. So now we have, we have the decider, but actually what the, what, what, what the stream, the, what the graph DSL takes as a configuration parameter is a, is a supervision strategy. So now we just want to convert our decider into a supervision strategy. So we need one more method for it. So our strategy would be called named after the decider. So we're resuming logging strategy. It would take a logger since it would be passing the logger to the decider. And we'll use a helper object actor attributes, which has a supervision strategy method and it takes a decider. And we can create the decider using the method we have just written. So we'll use the resuming logging decider with our logger. And using this resuming logging strategy method, we can, we, we can add some configuration to our flow, our, our graph. So we, we're getting back to, well, we have two places where we need to define it here, when we are running the, uh, the, the file processing in he and here where we are importing a single file. So we'll say with attributes, CSV importer, resuming logging strategy, and we are passing the logger we have here. And this, this instructs the, the materializer to, to, to log and, well, to basically use our, our decider when something goes wrong inside the stream. We'll add the same here. Okay, the compiler is happy, so are we. So there is a 
ultimate step because we have an in, in the importer uh, application we have the instance of our CSV importer already created but well we, we need to run it in order for it to do anything and we'll use the import from files method so that should be it now let's see if uh, if our database is in in an initial state that's by, by the way if you if uh, if you get lost something that's the last tag that we have so number nine resuming logging strategy so if you want to to just just check it out before we run it and now let's uh, let's get into into our cassandra container So if you have your uh, your Cassandra running in a Docker container, you just say Docker exec minus it, which is uh, and you, you you give the container name. In my case, it's Cassandra, and you give the command to run. In this case, it's the SQLSH, which is a SQL shell, and SQL is like a, a, a SQL-like language that is used for for querying Cassandra. So basically, what we are doing here is running the the SQLSH command within the Cassandra container. And we can see that the, uh, the readings table is empty. So now let's try to run our application and let's see what happens. I will also stop the comp SBT compilation in order so that we don't get any, any strange errors here. Okay, and we are ready to run the importer. So there is some output. Well, basically, most of the times it says that it, it, it saved everything. Uh, there were some, 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 some places where it said that there was an invalid reading. So we can, it, it's at, at the end, it said that it finished in less than eight seconds. So now we can see what's in our database. And actually, something is here. So, so it looks like we are done with it. Okay, and uh, since well, this is this is like the the basic uh, b basic stuff that I had. This is everything that is it's that is in the repository. But since we have still some more time, uh, I'll show you one more thing, uh, and this will be the the DS like the the the, hel the test kit for streams. So the hel like helper method that helps you write uh, write tests for 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 your application that uses streams. Uh, so for this, I'll need to um, to use my repository. I have the changes somewhere here. Hmm. Okay, the presentation mode is tricky. Sometimes, as you can see. Let's okay, so I have a like a, a cheat sheet here. Uh, let's let's try to write it from scratch. So let's just call it test, and we we are using Scala test here. So, uh, so what we want to do? Uh, well, the, the the first thing we need here is to to choose some kind of of Scala test superclass that we will be using for it. Uh, so we can use Flatspec, for example, and we'll need some matchers. This is a, the Scala test trait that that we just need to use here. Well, since we'll be dealing with our with our f uh, our stream and we'll be running the actual stream, we need an actor system and a materializer for it. So first, we create uh, an actor system. We'll call it well, JDD, whatever. Uh, then we need to create the materializer. When creating the actor materializer, it's important to add the add the parentheses because it it won't work and uh, uh, otherwise since it it needs to like you need to you call the apply method and it has the second parameter which takes the the implicit actor system and if you don't give the parentheses it won't well it it basically won't work so so please remember to to do it. Oops. 
sorry. Okay, so now let's create an instance of the of, of, of our uh, like of, of our CSV importer because all the as you may remember all, all the all the intermediate steps are defined as, as values here. So it, it it well it's it may not be the best design when you want to test it, but since since we have it in this form, let's let's just like adjust our test to use it. And remember this may not be the best solution. Uh, so we, we just create an instance of our CSV importer, and it takes two parameters. It takes uh, some configuration that is actually really not relevant here because well we'll be testing the on only the average step, so we don't use the entire parallelism configuration and things like that. Uh, so we'll, we'll just give the default configuration so that it doesn't so that the compiler doesn't complain. And we also need to to pass the reading repository. Yep, that's it. And the step we want to test is the compute average. So so the compute average is, is a flow, and this is the flow that we will be testing here. Okay, let, let me use my cheat sheet for a second. Okay. So the first step. The first thing we want to test is is that it just computes the average when all the readings are valid. So it should compute the average of valid readings. Okay, so we start with well preparing a list of our readings to process. And it would be a list and all our readings will be valid here. So let's say we have a reading with ID one and the value of two. Uh, then we have a reading another with ID one and the value of three. And let's have another pair of readings. The ID will be two in this case, and the values would be say four and five. So now the next step, uh, Will it will be to define our flow like the, the actual processing. So so we'll be using a source created from the from our list of readings. Oh, it should be lowercase. So we say source of readings and uh, now we want to run it via our our tested flow, so via the compute average that we, we have here. Okay. Now, now we'll do the actual run and, and we'll use the, the like the, the helper methods to like to, to instruct or to, to, to define our expectations. So we'll say flow run with uh, and now Let's see if, okay. And actually, if you're coding along, you, you may not be able to, to compile it because when I was doing the stash, I added some, like two, mo two more things. I, I added, so you, you, you can, well, you can add it at the moment if you wish. You need to add Scala test because it, it was not in the dependencies and you need to need to add the ACA streams test kit because that's, that's, uh, that's the library that provides, for example, the test kit probe, the all, like all, all, all the test kit for, for the, for, for, for the streams. So we have here a, a probe of a valid reading. So it basically would, would allow us to, to define our expectations of, of, of what happens uh, in the stream. And now we'll say that we request a number of items from the source. Well, we have four items, so, so let's request four. And then we can say expect next. Uh, and uh, either ordered or unordered. And in expect next, we can just say what elements we expect. And we will expect two elements because like oh, we have four readings, two pairs of them. Each, of, each pair should be squeezed into a single valid reading with, uh, with an average. So the f f for ID one, uh, we should have the average of two and a half. And for an ID of two, uh, we should have an average of four and a half. 
and we don't want any more elements in the stream. So we want to now so when we requested for elements, we want to we, we want to get uh, get back two of them, two averages, and then nothing more. So we say expect complete. So let's see. Let's go to SBT perhaps. Oh, okay, sorry. It actually it, it ran ran the other test which which has all of them. So we, we well we can we can just run it from here to see that it's it's the one we are actually running. Okay, so this one is fine. And well, in, in a similar manner, we can uh, we, we can create uh, other tests. For example, to uh, I think I won't be coding this one because like the idea the, the idea is pretty much the same. So so you just it, it's important here to note that you are using the the, the request method on the, the you are using the test sync probe, which which lets you basically define expectations of what you want to to, to get from the source and what do you what you want to have from the from the stream this time okay so that's that's all the code i have and it's like the, 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 those were the, the the real basics so we we use the the built-in uh, built-in dsl to for for creating the very simple flows but of course it's not like the akka streams is much more powerful F uh, for example you have you have a dsl for defining non-trivial graphs uh, here we had the situation where the like there was a single element which was uh, which was coming out of a stream and a single element that was accepted in an, another flow. Of course, you may have situations when you want, for example, to broadcast from a, from a, fr fr from your from your flow, so from your graph stage. So like to emit the same all, all the elements to multiple next stages, and there there is it, it is supported. It's also supported to do a merge on the other side, so that like an, a, a flow, a, a single flow can accept multiple multiple input inputs, and there is a like and there is a DSL. It's a, actually quite a nice DSL with arrows and things like that. So you can just define your building blocks. You can use you, you can then write uh, arrows, so almost you can also almost draw your graph and s to, to see what is actually happening there. Uh, you can build your own flow, of course. So, like there, are, there are a number of built-in flows that we are using here, like map async, map async and order, the framing stuff, and things like that. But of course, the, 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 those are just classes that implement an API. That in 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 terms of in in Akka streams, those are called shapes, and you have multiple shapes. You have a source shape, which is something that just emits something. You have a sync shape. That's that is it's a shape that has an in, in a single input. You have a flow shape that has an input and an output. And implement you, you, using those shapes and implementing them, you can basically create uh, your own flow. The flows can be stateful, so you can you, you can it, it is it is like officially supported. You you have a like dedicated place within the implementation where you, you can have a shared mutable state, so like shared between the like the, so that the flow keeps track or so keeps track of something. So it's it, it is supported, it is official, so so you, you you can do it. So stateful processing within a flow is allowed. Yeah, and that's all. So uh, if you have any questions, you can ask them now, you can ask me later, you can ask me on Twitter. Uh, the repository is available on GitHub. Uh, the link was already there in the previous slide. There is a really nice documentation for Akka streams. They are, it's like under constant development. So with every release of Akka streams, it's getting better and better. So they are, they are, co they are covering like practical stuff, uh, which is here. They are also covering some more theoretical stuff related to the stream. They are covering the internals of the streams. So if you want to get familiar with, with Akka streams, it re it's a really nice place to start. So thank you very much for your attention. And if you have any questions, I'm here. Hi. 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 I'm Alec. Uh, thank you for the present presentation. Um, can you tell me what is the you know major uh, advantage of using Akka stream uh, streams instead of uh, Spark streaming processing, for example? Well, 
as I said, Spark streaming is a distributed solution, so and you may you, you may not always want a streaming so a distributed solution because for in, in our example, for well, we just didn't need it, so it's it's like it's always good to 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 choose a tool that is like suitable for your problem that you want to solve. And in this case, for example, we we, we and it, it it's actually a production scenario because it's a cop. It, it's well, we we did the same thing in our actual project. Of course, the data is anonymized here, but. Uh, but but w w we did such kind of import on a real like huge number of files, and we didn't want uh, like distributed processing. We didn't want we, we didn't need the entire setup of a Spark cluster for for the distribution. We just used a single node, and it was enough to import the files. Although there really was, was a number of files, and it took like um, I don't know 15 hours or something to import them. But uh, like a single node was sufficient for it. So un un unless you don't want distributed processing, it may be well good good way to start. And yeah, I, I, I'm not really familiar with the with the API of Spark Streaming, but I don't know. But perhaps, well, if you if if, if you, you may also want like to, to choose between the API that just suits you, because well, if if uh, if, if Spark if the API of Spark is better for you, and you still want to like provision the entire cluster or if even do the, do the Spark Streaming on a single node, so it won't be distributed, and you just like the API more, it's like it's it's, it's your choice. Okay, thank you. There are also other there are other libraries that can do it. For example, there is uh, it's called Monix, and Mon Monix is a library. It's also like a, a library that implements the reactive streams, uh, like man Manifesto, and it it has like the, the API. Well, it's it's pretty similar, but it's also a bit different. So, but basically, the naming is different. So, if you are get you if if you are used to to the naming in the Akka Streams API, well, it may be a better choice for your next project. Uh, Monix has also some so some different some more so some different concepts. It has some also some interesting stuff that it's not in in Akka streams. So it's also well to, to have a look at it as an alternative. And there is also some uh, the library is called FS, I think, and it's uh, I think it's a streaming solution from from Scala Z, but I'm not sure. But it's like a it's a, it's uh, like the, 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 the FS thing. It's 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 Scala related. Monix is a library that can that also has a Java API, so you can also use Monix for, uh, for in, in your Java project. Well, Akka, actually, you can Akka streams. You can use Akka streams in Java as well. And the nice thing is that is that the Java API is really is very similar to the Scala one. So uh, if you leverage the, the features of Java 8, it's also a really nice API. So it's it's not it's not only a Scala thing. I was coding Scala here, but y we we might as well have used Java 8, and it would be almost similar. But have a look at have a look at Monix as well, because apart from streams, it has like uh, other diff other fun stuff as well. Any more questions? Okay, so thank you very much. <laughs>